Now, Greg Hunt has uh, come out today and he's lashed states and territories for making what he calls unilateral health decisions during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, here was Gre uh, Greg Hunt on my colleague Chris Kenny's show a bit earlier. I highlighted in the, uh, in the submission that I was not aware of medical advice for curfews in Victoria or for the five kilometre uh, rule. And I believe there was some discussion at the time that there was not a medical basis and it was not to, if you had to have medical advice then those uh, elements would uh, arguably never have occurred and i think that would have been a, a good outcome nick cater look we had heard before suggestions that victorian premier dan andrews was at times relying on public polling rather than medical advice when he made some of his more contentious decisions but to hear greg hunt who was the federal health minister come out and say he didn't know of any medical advice specifically that victoria was relying on well there'll be a lot of people who feel very angry about that particularly parents uh, whose children were suffering mental health issues? Well, let, let's put the, the, the usual caveats in place, Shari. This was a, a novel vac a novel virus. Nobody knew how to deal with it. Nobody knew how bad it was. So I'm going to cut state and federal governments and leaders a little bit of slack there. But I think the mistake the federal government did was to just to sit back and let the states make these decisions about closing borders, about lockdowns. We didn't see any pushback that I could see publicly or no serious pushback from the federal government against these ridiculous lockdowns in uh, Melbourne, nor about the excessive policing that went on. You know, I mean, the, mm. somebody should have stood up and said, we just don't behave to Australian citizens in that way. That is just not the way this country runs. I didn't hear any of that at the time, uh, except, uh, you know, some, some good people on your program and elsewhere on Sky, but certainly not from our political leaders. Mm. Uh, a very, very troubling period in Australia's history, in mm. my view. It's so funny how quickly we forget and we just move on from it when, you know, it's absurd to think that park benches literally had, you know, crime police take across them. I remember my son was, was one, literally one at the time, and I had to sneak him onto a beach so he could feel the, um, his toes in the sand and in the seawater, and the whole time I was petrified about getting a fine. Um, Matt Canavan, I mean, those are such minor examples compared to families who couldn't get across the states to get medical treatment. But said, how did we get into criminal, this? You're a criminal, Shari. You were putting <laughs> grandmas at risk. How dare you? But how did uh, we get crazy. into this? How did we accept crazy. all of this? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I want to pick up on what something Nick said. It is very perceptive. And I welcome Greg's comments today. His candour, uh, it's it's uh, it's welcome now. But but I, I know Greg has said that that in the future public health advice should be published, or there should be a rule that it's made public. Well, it raises the question why the, this federal government uh, public health advice against the five kilometre rule, for example, wasn't published at the time. Uh, I mean, Greg Hunt was the minister at the time. Why why didn't he direct this public health advice to be made public, and so we could all see that. Dan Andrews' rules were draconian and not based on any science at all. Uh, and Nick's right that there's very few polit politicians who came in against it. I, I would also cut politicians some slack in, in 2020. That, that It was novel then. But a year or so later in 2021, we kind of knew about the virus very well and we continued with this approach. I became very critical of it. And anyone who did was pilloried as, because, you know, as I was saying, you were, you, were, you were a grandma killer, you were going against scientific advice and... We were all operating in the dark, apparently, because Greg Hunt didn't publish this advice at the time. Mm, mm. Yeah, I think we do need a proper full Royal Commission, if only to know how to handle... Not even for the blame game, just to know... Although that would be nice as well, a bit of the blame game, but to know how we handle it the next time there is a virus that comes out of a laboratory, a, a laboratory somewhere, because undoubtedly, at some point in the next 20 years, 50 years, next century, that is going to happen. We're going to face the same questions again and we won't know how to handle it. Um, now, very quickly before we go, I want to play you this quite amazing comment from United States Senator Lindsey Graham today. Have a look. Israel's been hit in the last few weeks by Iran, Hezbollah and Hamas, dedicated to their destruction. And you're telling me you're going to tell them how to fight the war? and what they can and can't use when everybody around them wants to kill all the Jews? And you're telling me that if we withhold weapons in this fight, 
the existential fight for the life of the Jewish state, it won't send the wrong signal? Do you still think it was a good idea, General Austin, to get out of Afghanistan? Nick Cater, what do you think of this move by Joe Biden to effectively withhold weapons from Israel when it's fighting a war, as Lindsey Graham says, on three fronts? I think this is shocking. I think it's troubling, Shari. Uh, Israel is involved in a war that is not of its making. It is descending its territory. It's defending its people against the kind of attack we saw back in October. We know Hamas has said they will do it again. That was just a prelude. They have to get rid of Hamas, and, and that means going in with full force right now and getting the job done. I think for America to back off at this stage, is deeply, deeply troubling. You expect the free, the, the, the leader of the free world, of what's called the President of the United States, to take a firm stand when it comes to civilization versus barbarism. And that's what we're seeing in Israel Gaza. And it's why we have to give Israel all the help it needs to finish the job. Yeah. And uh, if you, if anyone hasn't read this yet, I highly recommend reading the Wall Street Journal's um, editorial on this. It's currently on the Australian's website. It is simply brilliant. Um, Matt, just very quickly before we go, it's Mother's Day this weekend. Happy Mother's Day to all the mums out there. Um, we're starting to see schools, including the Hunter Valley Grammar School, encouraging students to celebrate everyone, not just mothers. What do you think of this woke ideology? Well, well of course, I'm, I'm not a mum, uh, Shari, but... Uh... Yeah. That's oh, lucky, and you do have to declare uniquely. that because not everyone knows these days. <laughs> I've been playing mum this week. My wife's away in Tasmania visiting a sister, and, man, it's so hard. It is so hard for juggling these kids. They're great kids, but, but it's, uh, it's a much harder than my job as a senator. And so my, I, just, I just always am um, so grat grateful to my wife for what she does. But there's something very uniquely human about being a mum. Like, it's, it's, I'm not one, and I don't know, but rearing a child, bringing him to to life over nine months inside you. There's something really special about that, that we should have a word for. We should have maybe a day. <laughs> I mean, you know, we now have a month for... We now have a month for gay pride. But mums just get one day, and let's I keep it I think a month would be a good idea. Matt Canavan, Nick, Nick Hader, thank yeah. you both so much for your time.